to the new Open Green Map mapping platform. This is OGM2. Today I'm going to show you how to add a site, how to make a map, and give you a quick overview of the platform. When you first arrive at new.opengreenmap.org, you'll see some sites are visible in clusters. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and sign in on the upper right. And of course, if you don't yet have a sign in, you'll have to make one, but it's very fast. On this page, you can see links to the um, tutorial as well as places to leave comments. And you um, can sign in on the right. And then you're back on the home page, but today I'm going to take you right to the browse page. And here's where you can see maps as well as sites. I'm going to click show all maps. So here you'll see that I have some that I haven't yet updated from the original open green map. That's why they're grayed out. But as I make work on them, they'll look more like these. Today we're going to create a whole new map. So go back up to the top line. And by the way, you have a choice of gallery view or a table here to review your maps, as well as maps made by other people around the world. So it's actually very convenient. Let's click New Map. And the name of this map, well, Refresh LES. So I'm actually making a um, version of a um, cool, healthy, and free map online that we already have as a print map. So I'm going to put in a link to the print map and you um, highlight the word just like normal, click the little symbol there and because this is not HTML, this is markup language, it looks a little bit different but it's still very easy to put your URL right in between the parentheses and keep going on your description and uh, going on. So I'll stop there and uh, but now I'm going to also choose the team and there's my team. Some people are on multiple teams that why it gives you the option. Later you'll come back and make the map public but for now we're just going to click add and here we can add a tagline and I might say NYC's coolest neighborhood gets cooler. So it's supposed to be a little bit um, <laughs> engaging there. And you can include something about the place, your theme, your group, however you like. I had clicked the pencil. You can click it to save it as well, but that's not necessary. It's automatically saved. Let's move down to our cover photos. Now I chose, I, I prepared this image um, earlier simply by dropping the logo from the print map on top of a photo and I did that in PowerPoint and then I made a screenshot so it's really fast. There's a progress bar so you can see it being uploaded. This needs to be a fairly high resolution image because it shows quite large on different devices. The second box which is a square gives you the image that's either on your mobile or on that browse page. So if you didn't put both in, it would resize the oblong image, but this looks better. And you'll see later what I mean. Um, on the uh, online tutorial, it gives all the details about format and sizing. And um, so I advise you to check that as well. I believe this is 600 by 1800 PNG or JPEG. Here is a start date. Now, because this only let you start today, I'm not going to use it um, because we actually started it last year. And I'm not going to add an end date because this is an ongoing project. But I will edit the icon sets. I know I want green map icons. That's the standard on this platform. The sustainable development goals from the UN, hmm, I don't really want those on here. But what I do want to add is the green map recovery icons. So I've chosen that and I'm saving and now I'm moving on to the maps extent. So I've clicked the little um, pencil there and there's two ways to do it that work well. I suggest predefined area and you can see if our database has your uh, location in it and 
It does have New York County. I do not want the state. And there's all of Manhattan. So that's my predefined area for the extent. The st extent does two things. It tells the map um, user, well, when the map user arrives, this extent defines the scale and center of the map they will see at first. So that's the default view. The other thing it does is any site you put on this map has to be within this extent. Um, if you're adding one outside it, you can always move it afterwards. But in this case, I'm actually going to zoom out a bit and I'm going to use the rectangle tool because I know I want to include a couple of sites that are over the bridge whoops, in Brooklyn. And there I've got the Lower East Side and Brooklyn. Um, you can adjust it later, anytime, but there I've got the part that I want. And I can use the embedded map code to put this map, once it's done, into my website, and I can use the vector tile URL for other purposes as well. The only other thing on this page I want to show you was under those little carrots. Now, if you're on a, a desktop, you, this may be open already, and if you're on the mobile, you'll have to um, click around a bit because to find this part where you make it public. You may even want to come back and do this on the desktop after you've collected your sites while you're out and about on your mobile phone. Um, so you here you can make it public, you can check the author and when was it last updated. Now I am going to go back to our map and I'm going to add the first site. So here you can see for before we do that how nice that picture looks because we've put in a, um, uh, a nice high resolution photo. So I'm going to show you four different ways to add sites. So starting on the top bar, click Add a Site. And oop, it says my site was restored from a previous session. Well, it just stored the location, but um, I don't need to worry about that. I want to add, to start with, a library. So I'm going to click the little pencil and note, oh, if this location error pops up, just click it off. It's no problem. Um, right down here is the library that I want to add. Notice that the crosshairs didn't move. It was actually the map. So the crosshairs stay right in the center. Click Continue. And I'm going to select from my brand new map, the Refresh LES which I can do even before it's public. Now I'm going to hide the other options. This is the Seward Park Library. And um, it's an NY New York Public Library. And I, of course I might add a URL, hours, etc. But um, what I especially like about this one is indoor and outdoor spaces, which makes it ideal for cooling. And um, that's really the theme of our map, healthy, cool, and free. This meets it all. So there's our description. I'm going to add a photo. And I've actually uh, gotten a screenshot um, of the library that I took from the Parks Department website. And because I took that picture, I'm actually going to add a little credit for NYC Parks Photo. So I'm going to add a credit if I haven't used original photography. Notice that the picture can be deleted if you realize you've put in the wrong one. It can be turned if it's coming sideways. And you can add a total of five images. And that really adds a lot of richness to telling the story of a place. Use the downscale images for faster upload if you're on a slow internet hookup. Um, now I'm going to add the icons. Now I will choose um, library first, which I know because I've looked at the poster is under eco information, and that will become our primary icon. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. It's a Wi Fi hotspot, and actually, you can get green maps there. I'm going to add that it's got, um, it's a cool place from our recovery icon set. Oops, what happened to my cool spot? There it is. And you notice that each time you check one, it gets a little check mark, uh, check mark by it. And I'm going to add that it's a public space. 
and maybe I will add one other icon for uh, nature because we're in a park and that's actually a big draw for this library is that it's in a really great spot. Okay, save and now you can see the icons that I've chosen. Now I might, if this was on another map, I might choose cool spot as my primary icon because that's what I want people to notice about it in this context. But because the whole map is about cool, I'm actually going to be leaving it library. So mainly I showed you, did that to show you how easy it is to move the primary and secondary icons. I'm going to click Submit. And it's giving me a chance to either add another site or go to my home page. Right now I'm going to go to my home page and I'm going to skip over to Browse very quickly. And I'm going to zoom down and um, Again, go to Show All 31, and I'm going to show you how to add a site to it from another map. So I am going to add it from the recovery map. And right here, these three dots are your, um, how do you get to edit anything? And by the way, you can upload a CSV. So that is Another way to add sites, if you have a comma-separated values spreadsheet that's under 20 megabytes, you can add it right to this map and include all those sites directly. There's instructions on the tutorial. In this case, though, I'm not going to be downloading the CSV or the GeoJSON, so this gives me the access to the data in different formats. I'm not going to edit the map, but I want to view the features. And the features are going to show me all the sites on the map as well as the uh, introduction to it. And in this case, I'm going to go right to this Pier 36, this public pier, and I'm going to click Edit. And all I need to do to add it to my uh, map in progress is to choose the map name. So here we can see it's already on the Open Engagement map and on the Recovery map but I am going to add it to Refresh LES. There's a menu of all your maps there. And then you click Save, and that's all you need to do to add it to the map. And of course, you can add more photos that illustrate more about it. This one already has a couple, so I will keep moving on. The only other thing here, just like on the map itself, is where do you make it public? In this case, it's already public because it's on another map. So I'll close that window. And I'm going to go back to my map. So let me go to my ma the maps uh, listing. And we'll come down here now to um, our Refresh LES map. And I'm going to click right to the map. Notice the little yellow uh, symbol next to the name? That means that the map is not public. And I'm going to click here. So I go right to the map page. And I can zoom in, and I know that I want to add a, a, another site that's at the corner of 9th and C. And so I'm going to zoom in a little bit to Avenue C. There it is, and 9th Street, which I know is right here because of this park. And I'm just going to control click or right click, and then I have propose a site, and notice it jumped out of the way. Now, it Sometimes this works perfectly, and this comes up in blue, but it didn't. So it's actually fallen to the edge of my extent right up here. Oops, lost it there. Um, let me do it one more time. And it's right up here, so I'm going to click it. And although it won't show me the right spot, it did already select the right name of the map. So um, that's its two advantages. The name of the map and the location is already there. And I'm going to go ahead and move it here. Um, put that cursor, uh, that crosshair is right on the corner of 9th and C and continue. And then I can call, go ahead and type in the plaza. Oop. And a short description. And here I'm just going to say wonderful for now. And I'd come back later and add more about the garden. I already grabbed some of the photos that I collected of this place um, earlier. And 
I'll add a couple of those photos quickly. And oh, so because of the way that Proposa site jumped, it won't show me the photo yet, but it will let me add the icon. So in this case, I'm going to start by adding Community Garden, and if, which is under Flora, and Spring Blossom. And I'm going to add, because it's such a great culture space, local music and cultural performance. And for now, that's all I'm going to add. Um, and you can't see them, but when you click Submit, you'll notice those pop right up. So now I'm going to go back to my home page and go back to Browse and go back to that map. Whoops, gone too far. Click Show All again. Now most people don't have a dozen old maps, so that map will probably appear on the first line for you. But in my case, because I've been doing this so long, I have a stack of maps. Um, so now let us use, again, click those three buttons and we'll view the features and we'll review the sites and make sure everything is correct. Now this one is great. It's already been published and it has the icons, looks right. Here is the library where we have yet to um, make it public. So all I'm gonna do on this one is open the box on the side, make it public, close it, and go right back. And then here's the one that doesn't have the image. So I'm going to click Edit again. And I'm going to scroll down, oops, to the photos. And grab one of these pictures. And you can see this time it's coming in just fine. I'll grab another. Again, you can have up to five images there. So there's uh, loading in. And in just a moment, I will make this one public as well. These are high resolution images, so that's why it's taking longer. If you downscale the image, it will go in more quickly. I'm going to make this one public too. And we should be fine right now to go back to the map. Oop, I jumped, did I jump the gun on that? Let's see. View features. So you'll be bop, yep, I jumped the gun. So let me just go back and put that picture in so you can see it properly. And, um, sorry about that. Here, I'm going to just put in one of these nice, this nice smoke tree will let one photo go in so we can keep moving on our tutorial. By the way, um, photos that are your own are the best. It's also, I think, fair use to, I believe it's fair use, to take one from the site that people have put up as long as you credit them. So it's a good thing to do. Um, I'm not going to rush this one because we did that already, and there it is. Um, so now we are ready to go back to our map. And now we can see the map and see all three sites that we created. We may want to adjust that extent, so just the Lower East Side, this corner of New York City comes up first. But for now, let me show you very quickly how to manage your teams. So here is um, my team. And I can edit the description, change the logo, add to the gallery, and I can find users here, um, let me see, do I have intern in here? Yes, and they pop right up under info at greenmap.org. And I have four choices of what I can make them. They can be a guest. A guest can add sites even while the map is private. A member can add and edit their own sites. A leader can edit any site on the platform and the owner can do everything. They can add maps, add team members, add icons. I'm going to make this person a guest, the intern, and I'm adding them to the team. And you can see now that we have intern at Green Map on the team. So that's how you manage teams. Here is icons. 
I have one icon set here that I myself have put up on, as, under, as Green Map NYC, and that's the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And there's 17 of them here, and um, each one has a description. How do you do it? You click Add Icon, and you name it. By the way, they come in in the same order that you've put them up in. So this one would actually fall into the 18th place because I've already put in 17. So you can put in the name, the description, which again you can include links and images, and you can use a category. Now with a set of just 17, I'm not likely to include a category. I've never used subcategory, but when we made the recovery icons, for example, we made um, three categories and that helps people sort through them more quickly. When you have 30 or 40 icons, that's a good idea. You only need to make one image as SVG that's 100 by 100 and the platform automatically resizes it, you save it, and you've built, started to build your icon sets. So um, I encourage you to see the sets that are already up there first before adding your own. Uh, but the other thing I would like to show you uh, under health, there is an about, a terms of service, a privacy policy, right now very brief, um, and there's places to report issues either on GitLab or to email in a new issue. So that uh, is the overview of the whole platform. Um, I'm going to show all 31 here again, and we'll see our new map and get ready to continue to add more sites to it. I wish all of you the best with your uh, open green map using OGM2. So find out more at greenmap.org. Visit the site now at new.opengreenmap.org. Sometime in the future it will be at greenmap.org, replacing our earlier version. Our thanks to the GIS Collective and to all the green map makers involved in this project. Good luck with your map.